anyway, I'm, I'm still early. It's only 10 past nine according to this. There's most people who are going to be here, here already. Is there anyone missing? Please let me know. Put your hand up if you're not here. <laughs> Excellent. So what we're going to do in a few minutes, once uh, people settle in, we're going to do the last uh, meditation, I did promise. It will be a guided meditation on the loving kindness. It's something which is, I just got in the habit of doing at the end of my retreats. And one thing with loving kindness, a developing metta, which I emphasize, is that you cannot sort of start by just wanting to have loving kindness to very difficult things. Loving kindness is like starting a fire, and you always start a fire on materials which easily take the flame. You get some paper, and then you light a match and light the paper, and on top of the paper you can put little twigs, and on little twigs you put bigger twigs, bigger twigs, even more twigs, and as you go you have to sometimes, sometimes blow, to get the fire going stronger and stronger. And then when the fire is very strong, only then can you put the big pieces of wood on. And when you put the big pieces of wood on, then the fire is established and it becomes strong. And when that fire is strong, it's amazing what you can burn on top of that fire. Even wet, sappy logs the heat is so strong there, it can dry out and those logs also start to burn. And this is one of the reasons why that you can sometimes be so surprised. You start loving kindness and you think there are some people in this world impossible to give loving kindness towards. But as you go on, proceed, you will find that where you never thought you could give loving kindness, once the loving kindness fire is strong, of course you can give it to people you never in the world thought you could give loving kindness towards. Even like enemies who have hurt you a lot in the past. People who have really exploited you or abused you. You can even give loving kindness to them. Just because the mind is now powerful and it's got a lot strong heat of loving kindness. And of course, one of those people you give loving kindness towards, one of the most important but the most difficult is yourself. And that's wonderful when people do that, they realize this, how difficult it is to give loving kindness towards yourself. Somehow or other we've been conditioned into seeing all our faults, all the terrible things we do, like when I come on a retreat, I think of all the bad jokes which I told. I shouldn't have said that joke, but I say it anyway. <laughs> and at the end of that, that you realize you're not such a bad person, you deserve loving kindness, you're a human being, you have your idiosyncrasies, your special things which you do. And anyway, the jokes which I tell, it's not my fault. I'll give you an example of that right now before we start the meditation. And that was about this uh, poor man who had a motorbike accident. And it was a very serious accident. He went into the hospital and they had to amputate a leg. But when he came out of the surgery, they found out what well, mistakes do happen. They amputated the wrong leg. So he had to go into the hospital and get the, the, you know, the other leg, the one which should have been amputated in the first place. They had to take that off as well. So he lost both his legs. As soon as he, as soon as he, sorry, as soon as he could, he got a lawyer and he sued that hospital. But he lost his case. Why? He didn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> now that's a terrible joke 
But the reason I tell it, because I still remember to this day, my father coming home from work and telling us that story. We all believed him. Oh, that's terrible, somebody lost their legs. And then he, he said the punchline, and then we all laughed. Or like this. Okay, I've already started, so here we go. <laughs> About this young man. And he had a nice girlfriend. And so he invited the girlfriend to the school, like prom, you know, the school dance. And he was so excited that his girlfriend accepted. So he had to go and get some tickets. Unfortunately, when he went to the tickets, there was a big line of people also buying tickets. So he queued in the line and eventually got his tickets. And once he got his tickets, then he has to uh, queue to get a proper suit to wear. So he went into the, the hire company. He had to stand in the line there as well, a long line to get a suit. And then to get the, uh, the limousine hired. Of course, being uh, the time of the school dance, many people wanted limousines, so he had to queue in a long line there to get the, um, uh, the limousine. And then he had to queue for the flowers. Every place he went, he always had to queue in a long line. And when he actually, the time came for the dance, uh, for the school prom, as sometimes they called it, even just to get into the hall, there was a long line. He had to queue with his girlfriend in the line before they could check everything. When he finally got in there, he asked his girlfriend if she wants something to drink, and there was a table there for punch. You know what punch is, you know. And there was no punch line. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do some meditation. Here we go. So, we're going to start with about five minutes of just ordinary meditation, just learning how to relax the body. But I will do that guidance too, because I haven't really done a guided meditation on sweeping the body. So we'll do that as well. So if you'd like to sit down on a chair, on a cushion, on the floor, wherever you're comfortable, and don't mind if somebody comes in late, that's fine. Remember, this is loving kindness. So we're going to practice kindness to any noise of people coming in late or whatever happens. So, close your eyes. And the reason why we close our eyes is because it's much easier to be still, to be peaceful, when we're not disturbed by all the sights and people coming, going, whatever they happen to be doing. With your eyes closed, you can always, almost imagine, like I'm imagining now, I'm in my cave, can't see anything. You're in solitude, you're in a mountain, you're in a retreat center somewhere, which is so still and peaceful. That imagination can sometimes help set the scene for deep meditation. And once you set that scene and remember this is for peace and calm and also for this beautiful loving kindness. We start by being kindful, that's the combination of mindfulness and kindness towards your own body. So you start with your feet. Where are your feet right now? How are they? even the very end of your feet, your toes. How do your toes feel? If you have the idea you cannot really know how your toes feel, wiggle them, move them slightly, and that will create that awareness of one of these parts of the body which are so far away from your head and get ignored. So you can feel those toes and just with kindness see if you can relax your toes. In the same way you can relax any other part of your body, it's almost as if you have the goal of relaxation and you can 
get feedback from mindfulness. The awareness of how your toes feel now is not the same as a few moments ago. Are your toes getting more relaxed? And after a while, you can become quite skilled at taking something as, as usually ignored as your toes and relaxing them. Because I have been doing this for a long time, I can even feel my toes right now, except for my big toe on my right foot, that's a bit squashed. All the other toes are getting very relaxed and I can recognize that feeling of relaxation and ease, tingling and a deep sense of comfort in my toes. And when I've relaxed my toes as much as I can, then I move up to the soles of my feet and the uppers and the heels and once I'm aware of the feelings in the rest of my feet, then I first of all check, are they comfortable in their position or do I need to adjust my position? And again, I do need to do that, so I'm going to just fidget a little bit. It's great to fidget first and then Later on in the meditation, your body will be so comfortable, it doesn't need to move at all. So now, having fidgeted, I find my feet are really comfortable. And I know that feeling, it's not an, uh, an imagination. My feet are like they've been soaking in a tub of hot water. They feel at ease. It's a comfortable and pleasant feeling. And then I go past my feet to my ankles. Sometimes people can sprain their ankles. Or you may have other injuries there. Or your poor ankles might get worn out by going up so many flights of stairs because the lift still doesn't work. <laughs> But anyway, how do your ankles feel? And just giving them kindness, wishing them well-being. We often say, may all beings be happy and well. But may all parts of this being called you be happy and well. May my ankles be at peace. When I say words like that, I mean them which means my ankles start to relax. And when they relax, I can feel the difference. The body is getting comfortable. So I move up from the ankles to my calves, the muscles, the skin, and even the bones in my lower legs. Feel them, wish them relaxation and ease and feel them experience them relaxing and it always feels really pleasant and they go past the the legs or rather the lower legs to the knees and of course the knees can get very sore if you've been meditating a lot and you may have had strains, falling off motorbikes, sports accidents, or goodness knows what else. So knees can be very sensitive, so give them a lot of kindness, kindfulness. And wish your knees to relax to the max. And that's what I'm doing now to my knees. And I feel it's like they're expanding. They can't really expand, but it just feels there's nothing squashing them, nothing tight inside of them, and they feel really at peace. Even, it's like every part of your body, I sometimes imagine that like a separate being, my knees, separate being, and just acknowledging them and caring for them 
helps relax them. Sometimes people don't pay you any attention and you feel like, why? But when somebody comes up to you and just says, how are you? That makes you feel better. That's like my knees. And once my knees are at ease, then I go to my thighs, very big muscles. I can feel them, they've got a different sensation to them than even the calf muscles, the thigh muscles. You get to know how these things feel. And you get to know whether they're tense, as if they've been bruised or something, or whether they're at ease. When any, whenever any of these muscles are held tight, of course they get sore. So make sure that all the muscles are loose, at ease, with no stress on them at all. Then I go to the bottom muscles, the butt. And of course I mentioned earlier in another talk that when I start to become aware of the feelings in my butt, the sensations, there's always pressure there. It's never still because there's a lot of weight passing through those buttock muscles onto my cushion. But I just make sure that that's as comfortable as I possibly can get. Just the fact you're caring is very effective. Until the feeling in my butt becomes so even that I know after a few more seconds when I put my attention somewhere else the feelings in my buttocks will disappear. I've looked after them and so there's no business to be done there anymore. And I go to my waist. With my waist, sometimes when I meditate, I just want to hunch or lean back against the chair back. Sometimes I just ask my body, is that what you want to do today? When I just did that to my body, the body said, no, it wants to be straightened up. So I straightened up my um, back and it feels really good. And once my back has been straightened up and it feels good, if you want to hunt, that's fine too. Just ask your back what it needs. And then I go to the bottom of my body again, the bottom of the torso. Maybe it's because I'm a monk, there's always problems with sometimes the indigestion or what you're eating, what you're not eating. So I go up my digestive system. If there's anything there which is tense, and I can feel a little bit of tightness in my colon and intestines. I just give them kindness and relax them to the max. I don't try and cure anything, I care for it. And as I sweep my attention up my intestines, if there's anything I notice there which needs a bit of extra kindness, I will pause and give it as much kindness as I possibly can to the point that the intestinal feelings become so at ease, so peaceful. I can go further up the body to my stomach, further up to your lungs, to your heart, to all the other organs in the back. As you sweep up the body, if there's anything you find there which is not normal, which is tight, hurting, throbbing, painful, whatever. Pause there, zoom in, like what you might do on Google Maps. And as you zoom in, give the center of that as much kindness, compassion as you possibly can. Kindness is what relaxes the muscles. 
And when that kindness is very strong and those muscles relax, that's what allows the body's healing energies to come and do their job. Sometimes these areas of our body are like afraid and they tighten up, so it allows nothing to get in, not even healing. And then when I get up to the top of my body, I relax my shoulders. And how I relax my shoulders is up to you if this works for you, but I can feel my shoulders, the shoulder muscles, they are a little bit tight. So I imagine they're being pulled apart by these two invisible monsters, stretching them when there's no need to. And I imagine those two monsters, actually four, two on either side, pulling these muscles apart. I imagine them letting go. So nothing is stretching those muscles. Nothing is squashing them. They're loose and at ease. I can feel that sensation of those muscles being at ease. And it feels good. And I go down my arms. If you have any problems in your arms, say in your elbows or wrists, pause there. If not, just sweep down the arms with kindness. Feel all those sensations in the muscles or in the the, uh, the joints of the arms or the wrists until everything gets so at ease. Again, it's like you're laying these muscles on the softest of cotton cushions. So there's no pressure on them at all. And they can really be at ease. And then lastly, your hands. How are your fingers right now? It doesn't really matter exactly where your fingers are, as long as they're comfortable. Even I noticed, I think this morning when I meditated, my fingers, they usually want to be on top of each other, right hand over the left hand, but that morning, I just, the fingers just want to be just separated and just resting on my, um, my legs. That felt fine. So how do your fingers feel right now? Be kind to them. Wish them well, so they're comfortable. They don't have to be touching. The thumbs don't have to be touching. Wherever they're comfortable, that is wonderful. And you go back up to your neck, top of your shoulders. I read years ago that you can get neck ache because your head is not well balanced on top of the neck. So I always check at this time to make sure my head is not too far forward, not too far to the left or right. Is in its optimum position. And that will mean my neck will be comfortable. And then I start to be aware of the muscles in my face. If a person is sad, worried, anxious, angry, those emotions can be read on the way the muscles of your face are configured. So I am aware of all those muscles around my eyes, along my forehead, around my mouth, and make sure that each one of those muscles is relaxed to the max. till the face relaxes. And that's a nice, what we call these days, segues. It leads into relaxing the mind. But it's just being kind to those muscles. And the last little act of kindness which I do, you may argue with me that this can't actually happen, but why not imagine it? I imagine my brain my brain being very busy, talking, answering questions. So I imagine my brain really tired. I imagine lifting up my skull as if it's got a hinge 
above the right ear and opening up the skull, taking out my imaginary brain and putting it on this little mattress which is in a basket with a nice satin blanket on top of it and telling the brain, you worked hard, now take a rest. I will put you back in after the meditation is finished. And just imagine that. So the brain doesn't have to think and worry and plan and be concerned with all this work. It kind of happens and when you do imagine taking your brain out and putting it in a basket so it can have a rest. Meditation becomes more peaceful. So I've relaxed the whole body with kindfulness. So now it can be ready to do the kindness or metta meditation. And to start that, again, to use an object which easily can receive kindness or compassion. At this point I make no distinction between kindness and compassion. So what I usually do is I imagine going for a walk outside this temple and as I'm walking I can hear this sound. I'm not quite sure what it is but it sounds very sad, pleading. And I listen and follow that sound to get to its source. And it sounds like a little kitten. I like cats. If you prefer spending loving kindness to a dog or to a baby, a little rabbit or even a teddy bear, or as one lady in Sydney did, to a pot plant which she really cared for. But for me I use the kitten and I can hear the sounds from this kitten. I can't see it yet, it's in some dark corner somewhere. But I can hear the sound of moaning, of pain, of suffering. I can only imagine that that little kitten has been abandoned, has got no mother to look after it. And every time that little kitten has hoped that someone will be kind to it and care for it and feed it and protect it, instead it's been scratched and bitten and chased away. Beings, especially when they're born, they do need a lot of love and protection. They cannot feed themselves. And sometimes they can be so trusting, they get themselves into trouble and get terribly hurt. And the little kitten, which I was hearing a few moments ago, that's one of those beings. So I follow that sound as best I can. And in the corner of a little hole in the wall, I can see these two eyes looking at me. And I don't need to be a mind reader to know those eyes are looking with this combination of terror and hope. This fear and hope are there in those eyes. That little being has trusted people in the past and only got more hurt. It's not going to trust me that easily. So I keep that eye contact, contact and spread this loving kindness. Dear little kitten, I will never harm you. Dear little kitten, I'm quite a well-known monk. I'm sure I can find food for you. Find some milk 
some warmth, some protection. You don't have a mother or anyone. I'm sure I can look after you. Please give me the privilege of caring for you. And I say that with as much softness and loving kindness as I possibly can generate. To the point that I can see in those eyes, the hope is getting stronger, the fear is getting less. You can almost see that face starting to emerge from the darkness. And I very slowly just reach out my hand still given this wonderful loving kindness I will always protect you and care for you heal any wounds make sure you have a safe place to sleep at night time and that trust starts to build up between this little kitten and me until I can see the cat poking its head further out from the hole and I can put my hand closer to that cat and I extend that hand to the point that the cat allows me to touch her and as soon as I touch her I'm surprised a cat's fur is always smooth and clean this little cat's fur is dirty and it's also I can feel what I assume to be clotted blood on its fur. That poor little kitten has been bitten and scratched so many times, searching for love and protection. It's got rejection and pain. So when I touch it, I touch it so softly, always keeping that eye contact Dear little kitten, please give me the privilege of looking after you, healing you. I won't harm you or hurt you at all. And the cat trusts me. It allows me to pick her up. To pick her up so gently, because I know just one jerky movement and the cat will be afraid again. And my opportunity to be kind would have gone. So I pick her up so gently and even though when I can bring her body out from that hole just how thin is that body and how much clotted blood and wounds I can see on this body. The job is not to be upset at this time my task is to be so kind I pick it up gently and even though it smells hasn't been bathed or anything I'm very happy to very gently pick up that cat and put it next to my robe to hold it very gently Dear little kitten you have found a friend and a protector I will get enough food. I get lots of fish and chicken and whatever you need. You don't have to be a vegetarian cat. I will feed you up. I will, I don't know, maybe one day see you as fat as I am, little kin. But I will let you play and enjoy your company. And that little kitten trusts me allows me to start spreading this loving kindness really fully into this kitten's body. I imagine I'm holding it on by my chest so softly but securely and I imagine, it's not imagine, you can actually feel it, feel the area above my heart, the skin of my chest start to tingle with the feelings of loving kindness. I imagine loving kindness like these rays of light, warm light coming out from my heart area inside, going through my own chest, that's why I feel it tingling. 
and spreading through the body of this so needy, dirty, smelly, thin, abandoned kitten, going right inside it and going down each one of its legs to its paws, down the end of its butt to the end of its tail, up to its head, to the end of every ear. I see all those wounds on its ears. I'll, I will look after those, but right now I'm giving you kindness as a therapy. And then to its little nose and every whisker on either side of its nose. And I see that cat's eyes close. It trusts me and allows me to look after it with 100% trust that in the future it won't have any dirty skin on its body. In the future it will have some, some muscles where the bare flesh is, that its fur will be nice and clean. It knows it's got someone who will care for it. And as I'm holding it and I'm giving it as much loving kindness as I possibly can, I notice as much loving kindness as I give, I get this beautiful feeling of happiness back. The more I give, the more joyful I feel. So when I say to that little kitten, thank you for allowing me to care for you, it really is 100% true. We share the joy of protection, and caring, and looking after one another. And as I'm still holding that little kitten, I can kind of hear it start purring. Probably the first time in its life, even though it must be hungry, thirsty, just wanting food, it knows that its future is protected, which is why it can relax probably for the first time in days. And I keep spreading that loving kindness to this little imaginary kitten until the feeling in my chest is strong enough as if I put that little kitten down in a safe place. And I imagine somebody else this time a real person. It could be your partner in this world. It could be a sister or a brother. It could be a child. It could be a boss at work or whatever. Somebody who you're very close to, but someone who's hurting. The little kitten, I could see how much it was hurting. Many people in this world, they just hide how vulnerable they are and even sometimes how much pain they're in. You can imagine that person right in front of you. And as you're looking at them, you can see the similarities they have with a little kitten. Often we reach out to somebody for friendship, for kindness, for understanding, we just get scratched back. And many of us have been scratched and bitten so many times. And that person you're looking at right now is one of those. So look them in the eye and said, say to them, I care for you. I would like to protect you. I'd like to look after you, feed you. Keep you warm, know there's one person in this world at least you can trust. And you give this beautiful loving kindness to them. It's like the rays of light coming out from your chest. Go right into that close friend of yours. Right into them. And once it goes into their heart, those rays of warm golden light go up to their head, through their brain, through their speech, 
goes right to the end of each arm and down their legs to every organ in their body not missing out anything my dear friend please let me care for you may not be physical but emotional loving kindness may you feel happy well at ease successful in whichever way you want I won't judge you, I will just care. And that's what a wonderful friend is. One, a friend you know, if they possibly can, will just look after you to the max, whenever you need it, as you will look after them. This beautiful loving kindness goes right through them, up, down, cleaning any anxiety. You don't have to live up to any expectations, your friend. So they can relax and just be who they are. The faults, like the two bad bricks in a wall, that make the wall beautiful. So you give this beautiful kindness to one of the best friends in the world. And now without opening your eyes, can you imagine all the people in this room? The men, the women, the monks, the helpers, everybody. They all feel like you. We aspire to peace, wisdom, nibbana, jhanas. How many of you even touch those? doesn't matter. These things will happen eventually. But right now, spread this beautiful loving kindness, this warm glow of light from your chest to everybody in this room, the people sitting next to you, the people sitting behind you, the people in the other side of the room, you give it like rays of light spreading from your body into somebody else's body, from their body to somebody else's, as we connect with everybody in this room via loving kindness. Each one of you at the end of a retreat, you probably experience much disappointment, but also much inspiration to the joys and the suffering always go together. But may your joys be far in excess of the difficulties. May you, my friends in the Dharma, my Kalyana Mitta, may all of you find peace, happiness, joy. That's my wish for you. And just as you can feel that wish coming to you, from all the other meditators in this room. As we share our good thoughts for each other, all of you who are sickly, who are old, who have many difficulties in your life, I truly wish you happiness and well-being. Please know that any difficulties of life, sicknesses, the loss of people you love, that is like the fertilizer, the reality of our lives as human beings, which allows compassion and kindness and wisdom to grow like the fruit on the trees, like the blossoms on the flowers. That's not just saying something because it's nice. That is real. So you give this beautiful kindness, love, care to all your fellow meditators and then allow it to go further. In this temple, all the people who work here, all of the Sangha, the head nun here, has made this place available for us. All the people who work, in this place of being food, 
or whatever it is. May all beings associated with this temple, you may feel disappointment and pain sometimes, but I give you kindness, protection, warmth, the very best wishes in the whole world, as this loving kindness goes right throughout the whole temple. And even the temple cannot hold it. So you spread this loving kindness even further. When I look outside my window, I see all these blocks of apartments, flats, little houses down below the streets, and the people who are working in the shops. The whole town of Ampang, the part which I can see, the part which I haven't seen yet, and all the people in it, all the beings, the dogs and the cats and the birds in the air, and other animals, flying animals, animals which love it, live underground, crawling animals. May all beings in this town know that they are cared for in this moment. The human beings have got lots of loving kindness, empowered by their meditation, to wish you peace and happiness in your lives. And once this loving kindness starts to spread, it doesn't get thinner. It's not like dil diluting it. The further you spread it, the stronger it gets. So now you start spreading the loving kindness not just to the town of Ampang, to all the other parts of Kuala Lumpur, where you live, where you have friends, or even where you have enemies, all of you. In this moment, I can't understand enemy. I just give you this energy of my life, the powerful energy of meditation to each one of you in the city of Kuala Lumpur and surrounds. Or even further, I know Malacca, and up to Ipo, up to Penang, down to, uh, what's it called, in the north of Singapore. So all beings in this area, you keep spreading it. There's many towns and cities I leave out, but it doesn't matter, the loving kindness this cover, this warmth of loving kindness goes all over, spreading up north to Singapore, to Thailand and Burma, south past Singapore to Indonesia, and all those are many, many islands of Indonesia, going south to Australia, where I'll be going soon. So many monks there, they're probably going to be very happy only a couple of days and I'll return. In the meantime, I give you my kindness. More than that, over <coughs> to China, Laos, Hong Kong, down to India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka. I imagine this like golden glow, a blanket of kindness spreading from Ampang, in Malaysia, all over the world, spreading over the Middle East, spreading over Ukraine and Russia, and so many people suffering there, just like the little kitten, only wants to have friendship and love, and receives bombs and bullets instead. Down through Africa, down across Europe, United States, down especially to Guadalajara in Mexico, where Vanuahula comes from. To all beings in North America, South America, Central America, the whole world. Not just human beings, but all the fish and animals in the sea, all the birds in the air, all those animals who are hibernating from the cold, in the northern hemispheres of the world. Each one of you know that you're being cared for 
thought of the loving kindness is coming to you. May you all be happy, well, at peace, safe, and find the joy in your life. And as this beautiful warmth of loving kindness settles over the whole of the planet Earth, please remember you've left out one person. You. So imagine, <coughs> don't open your eyes, imagine you are standing in front of a full length mirror and there is this person you've lived with so many years, the person who bears your name, the one you look at and you can recognize. You're not quite sure exactly who this person is, but that doesn't matter. It deserves your forgiveness and kindness. You know how many times you've been hurt in this world. Sometimes you deserved it, and most times misunderstandings. So look at this person in the mirror who bears your name and say, me, I care for me. May I be happy and well. May I be at peace and find joy and protection, get enough food and clothing and may also get that wonderful friendship which Kalyana Mitta can give. That understanding, I may not be perfect, but I'll be kind to you. And that you give that kindness to yourself. May I be at peace. May I be free from all criticism. May I feel that I am good enough. I'm a human being, and that's enough. As you spread this loving kindness into your own body, into your own mind, strong and powerful. How does that feel? The more sincerity you give spreading loving kindness to yourself. The more, than, the more that sicknesses heal, tension vanishes, anxiety just gets evaporated. You know there's somebody who will always care for you, and that's you. Now, imagine that great world, you've left this beautiful, warm, loving kindness blanketing this world. Imagine leaving the warmth where it is to all different places in this planet Earth, but bringing back the light <coughs> as if you're drawing the light back in from the furthest part of planet Earth back into Asia back into Malaysia, back into Kuala Lumpur, back into Ampang, bringing it back in, focusing it in Ampang, Sampotong Temple, bringing it into the meditation hall at Sampotong Temple, bringing it into your body, into your heart, you gather all this energy in, leaving the warmth outside, until loving kindness becomes like a big ball of intense, concentrated golden light inside your own body. And the only place to keep it is in your heart. Imagine your heart like a white lotus fully open, and this ball of loving kindness just hovering over the center of that lotus, and the petals slowly closing in, 
covering and protecting that loving kindness for use at another time, another place. <coughs> Please keep your eyes closed for another minute <coughs> as I give the blessing. Nati me saranangan yang Puto me saranang warang Ete na satcha wajena Soti te ho tu sabada Nati me saranang anyang Dhammo me saranang varang Ete na satcha wajena Soti te ho tu sabada Nati me saranang anyang Sangho me saranang varang Ete na satcha wajena Soti te ho tu sabada Thank you all for listening.